Defend yourself against DDoS attacks by hiding your true IP address with ExpressVPN. And visit my custom link expressvpn.com slash gillymaster in the description to find out how you can get an extra 3 months free. Hey everyone and welcome to another GTA Online Chop Shop DLC video here on the channel. Today I'm going to be going over all the drip feed vehicles from the update. And it'll be in the same format as every other one of my drip feed vehicle gameplay videos. I'll take you through some of the customization of the vehicle in Los Santos Customs. Then I'll cut to gameplay where you can see and hear the vehicle in action. After that, I'll talk about its performance very briefly and any other interesting things about the vehicle that would be good to know. Also, just to be clear, these aren't in any specific order how I have them set up here. So without further ado, let's get into the first car, which is the Cavalcade LX. And from the name and looks, it's obviously based off of a more modern day Escalade. It's got what you'd expect for customization, bumpers, hood options, grills, mirrors. By the way, the grill on this thing is massive. It does have a pretty nice primary and secondary color setup, so you can find some neat combinations to make with that. However, I decided to just go for a white color all around. It makes it stand out, especially when you black out the windows. You have the massive black windows and the white paint to contrast with it. This vehicle actually should be coming to the game somewhat soon. In fact, some people already have it from buying it off of someone at the car meet because apparently someone managed to glitch one of these from the robbery missions to a personal vehicle to then give to others. Overall, it's a nice SUV, at least from a look standpoint. I don't know if you'll exactly be winning a ton of races while using this, but it's not really the idea of a vehicle like this anyways to race with. It's more of a luxury vehicle. It does handle well for a vehicle of its size, though. It's pretty massive, all things considered. I just wish it had a Monitech or armor plating options with bullet-resistant windows. That would make it more worthwhile, in my opinion. Up next, we have what seems to be the 20th Baller variant, the Baller STD. <laughs> Clever naming right there, Rockstar's finest. This is based on a newer Range Rover, obviously. Most likely, this is a car from GTA 6. You'll probably see this one in traffic, just like we do with the old baller in traffic in GTA 5. Those are the vibes I get from it, at least. And again, for an SUV, there's some good customization. Nothing that changes the vehicle around a whole lot. I did change the trim color to full-on black, because I just think it looks better having that contrast stripe down the middle. And I would have to say it's definitely the best looking baller that we have in the game currently. But I really just don't know why they keep adding in baller variants when we already have so many of them. There's so many other cars that deserve other variants aside from the baller. The stock wheels on this can also be changed if you find a way to do that. You can apply color to them which looks better. Compared to the cavalcade we just looked at, it's definitely much quicker than that. In non-HSW races, I can see this being very competitive actually. It gets going, that's for sure. This vehicle has a Monitech, so you can put a lock-on jammer or remote control unit in it, but unfortunately it doesn't have armor plating, which I find strange because we literally have other ballers in the game with armor plated doors, so why wouldn't they just make this one with armor plating options too? Especially since they did everything but add armor plating because it also has bullet resistant windows so just some weird inconsistencies with some of these mindset vehicles. Some of them have it with no armor plating or window protection whatsoever. Some have it with bullet resistant glass with no armor and some have both. It's just very odd. Moving on to yet another SUV here. Rockstar really went overboard with SUVs in this DLC for some reason. I feel like half of the drip feed vehicles are SUVs. This is the Bravado Dorado. 
I like the name. It's based on an older Dodge Durango. And honestly, I don't know how they aren't getting sued for this because they look so similar. It's crazy. I wanted to keep the look more simple on mine. There's some bull bars you can apply to the front and some grills you can change. But to me, the most iconic grill is just the stock one. That's the most recognizable. So I just left it like that. The only things I changed were the bumpers, the fenders, and the skirts, I believe. Possibly also added a spoiler. And I went with the classic red paint job. Whenever I see this car in real life, it's always a standard red color. Or whenever I think about it and just visualize this vehicle, it's always with a red color on it. If you really wanted to, you could put a gigantic GT spoiler on there and just get really wild. But I, of course, opted against that. You might have been able to tell from just watching the gameplay here, but the Dorado is very bouncy. I didn't lower the suspension at all, so maybe that has something to do with it. It just feels like you're able to really feel those bumps, and the vehicle seems to shake more than others do when you go over those bumps. It'll be interesting to see where this vehicle sits in terms of performance, though. If I had to guess, I would say between the Baller and the Cavalcade. And by Baller, I mean the one we just looked at, not any of the other ones. Possibly leading closer to, or maybe even worse than the Cavalcade, though. All right, let's get into the vehicle that I'm sure most of you guys have been waiting for, the Police Gauntlet or Gauntlet Interceptor. By far, this is the star of the show, the best vehicle in the drip feed, maybe even in the entire update. Now, this might just be for single player, but for customization, it has basically all of the customization from the regular Gauntlet, but with extra police car stuff as well. And I mean things like covering up the headlights and taillights to make it look like a race car. And you can even add a wheelie bar and parachute to the back, which doesn't make sense at all for a cop car. So that's why I think it might be different in the line, but maybe that's just how it is. It's got a handful of awesome liveries to choose from. Lots of very good ones in there. For my build, I try to make it look like the Vice City Gauntlet cop car that we saw in the trailer for GTA 6 with the tan coloring on it and everything. And I think it came out great. But as much as I like how it looks, it costs over $5 million apparently without the trade price, which is a bit ridiculous. That's more than the Raiju Jet, at least with the trade price. This car is just so much fun to drive and look at while you drive. For my build, I took off most of the cop car mods, so let's transfer to some more gameplay to really show off everything about this car at night, in the rain, with all the lights on. I assume not too many people will be surprised when I say this, but it handles just like the Gauntlet Hellfire, but it almost feels like it has a bit more traction and maybe even a higher top speed as well. It feels a bit quicker. That again, I haven't driven the Gauntlet Hellfire in a while, so maybe that's just how it is normally. Unfortunately, this is looking like it is one of the last cars to release from the drip feed though, so it could be months before we see this in-game, which is a huge bummer. It's only natural that we jump from one of the best vehicles in the drip feed to what I think is the second best in the drip feed. The Canis Terminus, a brand new modernized Jeep in all its glory. It's in the off-roads class, of course, and there's lots of customization available to you here. Aside from the regular options you see on most vehicles like bumpers, etc., you can change the doors to a more open style of Jeep. The roof can be modified or removed entirely if you want. It's really what you'd want to see out of a Jeep in GT Online. Rockstar does usually knock it out of the park when it comes to off-road vehicle customization. The Camacho is the same way. It's got multiple liveries to choose from as well, but I just went with a regular color of ultra blue. 
I don't know why, but this light blue color pops into my head whenever I think of a Jeep. The rims, as sick as they are, unfortunately cannot be colored, so I did change them. But yeah, this one will be a definite buy from me, and that's not even considering the fact that this has a Monitech and armor plating. So you'll actually be able to drive this around in free mode without worrying about getting blown up at all. Unfortunately, it doesn't have bullet resistant glass, but at least we get the armor plating. This Jeep can damn near fly down the road. I was really shocked when I realized how much acceleration and power this has. I don't want to jump to conclusions or anything, but assuming no HSW, this has to be one of the new best off-roaders performance-wise, I think. Might even be faster than some of the older sports cars, not even joking. And that brings us to our last customizable vehicle in the drip feed, the Impaler SZ. It's kind of a cross between an older Impala SS and a Caprice. It reminds me a lot of the GTA San Andreas police and taxi cars. They had that boxy sort of look to them, just like this car does. And they might even be the same vehicle. There's not a ton of customization for this car. It does have a few crazy options like removing the back bumper or putting a gigantic spoiler on there. You can turn it into a drag racing vehicle, which might be neat for when the drag races come out later down the line in the drip feed. Because yes, just like we have drift races, there are drag races in the drip feed. And perhaps this is what they were going for with it. I tried to make mine look like it was a vehicle you'd see in Midnight Club or something with the chrome and dark red combo though. It's got some good grip for a sedan, you can take turns at decent speeds with it. Whether or not this will compete with the Shafter V12 or Reinhardt, I don't really see that happening. I once again, I'm getting the vibe that this is another GTA 6 traffic vehicle, like you'd see an NPC driving this around in Vice City or something. Now that's all for the cars that we can own and customize, but one more vehicle is in the drip feed and it's part of the festive surprise event likely starting tomorrow. The Happy Holidays Phantom. This isn't going to be an ownable or even drivable vehicle for us in online, but in single player, I can drive it all I want with mods. And yeah, it's basically the same old Phantom dish with lights that actually work. And at night, it looks so cool. It's really awesome. One thing I did notice about it is with mods, if you change the secondary color, it changes the color of the Christmas lights on the cab. And that is so sick. You can make them green or white and makes it stand out nicely. It just sucks this is only for the event. It would be so cool if this was some sort of livery or skin that we could unlock and apply to our own Phantom Customs in-game. Anyways, that is going to wrap up the drip feed vehicles for the Chop Shop DLC. There are technically a couple other ones like a Cluck and Bell Benson and another version of the box fill just with a different livery, but those really aren't anything to write home about. They're just different liveries on the vehicles. So I'm not really going to include those here. Let me know which car is your favorite down in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, feel free to leave a like as well as subscribe to my channel for more GTA Online content. I also want to give a huge shout out to my channel members for your support. If you'd like to become a member for some exclusive perks, you can either use the join button or the link that's down in the description. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day.